Hi, this is the Science Chef. This video is the second part of our tutorial on the solutions to the 2019 YEC alternative to practical chemistry in preparation for the 2023 YEC GCE. If there's a specific topic you'd like us to answer questions on, feel free to drop it in the comment section. Meanwhile, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to this channel, and turn on your notification bell. Alright, let's start. Question 2. We are told that D is a mixture of two inorganic salts. The following tests were carried out on D complete the table. First of all, D is a mixture of two inorganic salts. So this is a mixture of two salts, fine. So the following tests were carried out on D complete the table. Now this is a typical alternative practical question. Like I told you in part 1, that you don't perform life practicals in your GCE. You are given questions like this to test your understanding of the theory of practicals. So what you will need to answer these questions is the knowledge of the chemistry behind these reactions, right? So test one, D plus heating. What does that mean? It means that D was heated, right? And for D to be heated, there's something that examiner is what expecting. Whenever you heat a substance in chemistry practicals, you are testing for its thermal stability. In other words, how stable is it to heat? Will it decompose on heating or not? Now, based on your syllabus, there are three groups of compounds that can be tested based on thermal stability. One are the nitrates. Two are the carbonates. When I say carbonates here, I mean trioxocarbonate 4. When I say nitrate, I mean Try oxo nitrate 5. Under this carbonate, can also have the hydrogen carbonate. Let me just write HCO3 minus. And the third one, the ammonium salt. So, based on YX syllabus, these are the three classes of compounds that can be tested on for their thermal world stability. When you hit these compounds, there's something you are expecting. If they are not thermally stable, they will decompose on heating, is it not? And when they decompose, each of these group of compounds will produce a gas. Like the ammonium salt will liberate ammonia gas. While the nitrate salt will liberate the NO2 gas. And the carbonates and the hydrogen carbonates. The carbonates and the hydrogen carbonates will liberate CO2 gas are we together fine now that we know the types of gases that we expect when a substance is heated in chemistry practicals right the next thing that you need to know is or are the properties of this word gases or how to identify this word gases we have a simple code for identifying gases coda or cuts you like put it that way we used to call it codas yes the color the order its density, action on litmus, and solubility. The physical properties of what? Of a gas, which you can use to identify the gas. Like at least this, this, and this can be easily used to identify a gas, right? So, we know that ammonia is a colorless gas, right? Ammonia is colorless with a what? Pungent smell. And turns what? It turns red litmus paper blue turns red litmus blue right whereas co2 is also a colorless gas co2 is colorless right colorless and odorless but it turns blue litmus paper red are we together but the observation that we have here is neither of this as this one gives us what a reddish brown fumes turns moist blue litmus paper red so it's very likely that it will be what no2 what are the properties of NO2? NO2 is a colored gas and it has a reddish brown word color, right? And it's also acidic because it's an acidic oxide. It can dissolve in water to form an acid solution. In fact, it's an acid anhydride and not just an acid anhydride, it's a mixed anhydride. When NO2 dissolves in water, it forms a mixture of two acids, right? So, given this observation and from the analysis we have carried out here, this gas here, this observation could only be for NO2 gas. So our inference here would be NO2 gas 
evolved. NO2 gas evolved. Now, which ions will give off NO2 gas when heated? It can only be the nitrate ions. So, NO3 minus present. That can only be trouser nitrate 5 ions. Now, the next question here says residue allowed to cool. So, it means that after the salt was heated, there was a decomposition because a gas was given off and there was also a residue. Now, the inference here tells us that the residue is what? Lead 2 oxide, PBO. So, it means that it was a lead 2 salt. And we have just confirmed from test 1 that the anion present there or, or anionic radical, negative radical present in that salt is a trouser nitrate 5. So, it means that it probably must have been a lead 2 trouser nitrate 5 salt. Are we together? Fine. But we are asked to state the observations that we will see here if you allow a residue to what cool. So it means that the salt is PB NO32. So which undergoes thermal decomposition to give us PBO plus NO2 gas solid plus oxygen gas again. This is solid, this two, this two, this what four. So this is the brown gas that we are seeing here and that's being involved. Now this PBO, what's the characteristic property of PBO when heated? Like two oxide is reddish brown when hot and yellow when cool, right? So that's what they expect you to write here. Whenever you have a solid component that gives you this kind of observation in your analysis, then that substance is actually what? Like two oxide. So reddish brown, this space is too small. Reddish brown, I have to spill over. Reddish brown when hot and yellow when cold. That is lead 2 oxide. Another common oxide that you need to take note of when heated is your zinc oxide. Of course, zinc oxide is yellow when hot and white when cooled, right? Whereas lead 2 oxide is reddish brown when hot and yellow when cooled. So take note of that. Now, the next question says D plus water and stead. Remember, you were told that D is a mixture of two inorganic water salts. So D plus water and stead. Portion of solution in B1 plus FeSO4 aqueous plus concentrated word H2SO4 brown ring word formed. Now this is a brown ring test, right? Brown ring test. You see freshly prepared word ion two tetrahydrosulfate six and conk H2SO4. We've already established that D contains what lead like two trouser nitrate five. And for the guy that was producing test AI, you could easily say that. A trouser nitrate 5 ion is what present. But since they still want an actual confirmation, so they now want to carry out the wet test on the word on the sample using the brown rings word test. And of course, you can see the observation here brown ring formed. So with this formation of brown ring, it means that NO3 minus is what present. The brown ring is due to the formation of this complex addition compound FeSO4 dot NO. That is the compound that is responsible for that brown ring in that test. That is a topic for another day. So let's move on to the next question. The next question says portion of solution. Portion of that solution now. We have established that the solution contains lead 2 trouser nitrate 5. That's one of the constituents of the mixture of inorganic salts of sample D. So, portion of solution in B1 plus sodium hydroxide in drops then in excess. Now, what do you use sodium hydroxide to test for? In your qualitative analysis, what do you use sodium hydroxide to test for? Of course, cations, right? Mainly cations. And what is the cation in this salt now? The cation is what? Like two ion. Is it not? So when you add sodium hydroxide to lead 2 ion in drops, what do you expect? 
remember like two iron is one of the amphoteric ions that will form a white precipitate in drops and then the precipitate will dissolve in what excess just like zinc iron and aluminium iron are we together great so white precipitate white precipitate write your precipitate in full forms precipitate dissolves dissolves in excess to form a colorless solution because zinc salts are white salts sorry lead two salts so lead two ion what present they've given the hint already so that's the observation they're expecting from you now portion of solution in b1 is now being reacted with dilute hydrochloric acid plus what heat now what happens here what's the cation present in the salt pb2 plus so when pb2 plus reacts with hcl what will happen this will form what pb cl2 plus 2h what plus take note this is not a displacement reaction but this is a double decomposition because there's exchange of what radicals and it leads to the formation of what an insoluble what salt pbcl2 like two chloride is an insoluble salt so this is a double decomposition so that's why you have that white precipitate here right but the characteristic of like two chloride is that when you hit that mixture contain the precipitate it will dissolve right but if you allow it stand after the dissolution if you allow it stand for some time the precipitate will reappear are we together so that's what they want you to write here you can see plus heat then allowed to cool can you see it fine so white precipitate dissolved on what on heating That white precipitate is what led to chloride. So the white precipitate dissolved on heating, right? Then, when allowed to cool, precipitate reappears. On cooling. So this is the characteristic property or these are characteristic properties of lead 2 chloride which you can use to identify it now in the last test we are told that a portion of solution was now reacted with hno3 agno3 and ammonia of course when once you see agno3 and ammonia in qualitative analysis it is what you expect there's only one set of ions you should be expecting and that is what halides right the halides and luckily for you, in your syllabus, the only highlight you'll be tested on is the word the chloride ion, which is already what is stated here. So it's just the observation that they need from you, right? So when you add no 3 to this solution above, right? From what we have so far, there will be no reaction, no visible what reaction. There will be no visible reaction when we now add agno3 that's silver trials nitrate 5 a white precipitate would be seen white precipitate a white precipitate will be what formed and what's that white precipitate that white precipitate is simply what silver chloride agcl so it means that that sample d contains the chloride word ion Apart from the chloride ion, the sample also contains the triazonitrate 5 ion. But the triazonitrate 5 ion will not react to the silver triazonitrate 5, right? Because there's a common word ion, right? That's triazonitrate 5 ions. So because of that, the two compounds or substances will not react. But the chloride ion will react to the silver triazonitrate 5 solution to form what silver chloride. Are we together? And that silver chloride is a white word precipitate, which gives us an idea of what to expect right that white precipitate tells us that chloride ion is what present or suspected right but what we will now use to confirm the presence of the chloride ion 
is the aqueous ammonia. We now add aqueous ammonia in excess to the silver chloride. The white precipitate will do what? Dissolve. So AgCl, let's say plus aqueous ammonia, plus aqueous ammonia in excess, will give us what? A complex. That's Ag diamine diamine silver 1 chloride which is the complex that is always formed when excess aqueous ammonia is added to the white precipitate of silver chloride so this complex here is soluble so that is why the precipitate will do what dissolve to give a clear word solution or a colorless solution so precipitate dissolves to give a colorless please bear with my space a colorless solution you just have to write all the points that are available because you don't know where they will allot their marks are you together they may decide to allot marks for color and for the dissolution of the precipitate. So it's not just enough to write precipitate dissolves. Write precipitate dissolves to give a colorless solution or precipitate dissolves to give a deep blue solution or whatever color solution that is observed. So here, no visible reaction. Chloride ion. When you add HNO3 and nothing happens, HNO3 is an acid. I wonder why they are adding two spaces here. Because normally, this test with HNO3 is meant to prevent other ions from interfering in the reaction. Maybe ions like trouser carbonate 4, sulfide, trouser sulfate 4 that will produce SO2 gas, CO2 gas and the rest of them. So since those gases are not present, you know, well, since there was no effervescence, it means that none of these guys was present, right? Here now, it means CO3 2 minus SO3 2 minus and S2 minus absent or not present, right? Then this white precipitate tells us that chloride ion suspected, right? But now they don't accept suspected again. So you just write present. Chloride ion present, not suspected. It is now the aqueous ammonia that is always used to confirm the presence of chloride ion right due to the formation of what diamine let me write the name diamine silver one chloride and that's how you end your 17 cool marks very easy understanding the chemistry of the practicals that is it if you're able to learn anything from this tutorial, like this video, subscribe to our channel, and turn on your notification bell if it's your first time here. If there's anything you want us to talk about, or if there's anything you don't understand, you can always leave a question in the comment section. Be sure that we'll attend to it. So until we come your way next time, always remember that no matter how short you are, you can always see the sky when you go outside. Peace and God bless.